Okay, this time we're going to take our value drawing of our object and use that as a guide. And we are going to be using our cool colors. So last time we used our warm colors, so I folded my value chart in half. And if you have your color wheel out, we're going to be using blue, violet, and green, and then everything in between. So we're using this part of our color wheel, okay? Again, I have out my cool colors here. I have one green that is separate because it's going to stay green. I have green and blue in this compartment, but I'm going to be mixing those together. And I have violet over here. We are going to be making our value scale. And since green is my lightest value color, I'm going to leave my highlight here. And remember, if we have too much water, we can pinch out our brush or use our paper towel to soak up the extra water. And we can go from there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my green and last time we used our white wax crayon to, do, to use our wax resist. This time I'm going to paint around the highlights so I'm keeping the area dry. If you try that and it doesn't work for you, then let the paper dry and when the paper is dry, use the white wax. So remember that we're starting with our light values of wash first. So it's really important to use plenty of water. And I'm pretty carefully going around where the highlights are to make sure that I don't accidentally paint over them. If my color is kind of dark, I can just use water from my water cup and there and move the pigment that's on my paper around. So remember last time we talked about how important it is to use lots of water when we're using watercolor. The transparent quality is one of the most important things or is the most important thing about watercolor. And last time I had trouble with my value scale uh, being wet and brushing into it with my hands, so that's why I moved it to the top of the page this time. Okay, so now I'm going to mix my blue and green together, and I'm going to come back, and if I have too much water in the brush, I can pinch it out and just dab it in so I can control the color a little bit more, and I'm adding to my value scale. Okay, so now I'm going to use my mix of blue and green to my next value. So I'm looking at my object. It's still sitting here on the table. And Remember, I'm not painting over all the areas. I'm looking at where the darker values are. So my lighter areas are going to stay my first layer of wash with just the green.
and I can control how much color is in my wash and how much water is in my wash by controlling how much water is in my brush and how much pigment is in my paint that I have mixed up in my lid. I always want to go from my lid to my watercolor instead of from my paint tray to my painting. Okay. Now, you, you might notice that my paper is very, very wet. Okay. So we're about at the point where I need to let that dry so that I can control it. Remember, we're building up layers of washes. So what I have so far, you'll notice the paper is very shiny. It's very wet into wet. And very transparent. And I'm thinking that the top of the pepper grinder here needs a little bit of color, but I want to be sure that it is not too wet because I don't want this darker area to flow into it. So I'll go back and pick up some of that water. Okay, so I have two layers of wash and now I have to let this dry probably for 30 minutes to 40 minutes, and then I can come back and add and build my values. Two layers of wash is not enough. We have to, our goal is to use all of our values on our value scale, which means that we have to let this dry so that we can control where the highlights and where the shadows are going. Okay, so we'll let this dry and then we'll come back and do part two.